Hello! I just got this package as a gift for my birthday for my mother. Um, I got to order it myself. It is from Splendid, which is a cute little store here in the Netherlands. They have a lot of items on their web shop that you can otherwise only buy in Japan um, or anywhere else. And I thought it would be fun to open it up together. So here we go. Look at me not cutting myself with scissors like a real professional. Say me. Yeah. little card and a nice little promotional booklet this is the owner um, here are all the credentials I will link them down in the description as well it's really cute store it's really worth visiting for any handcrafts okay no plastic I like that and then we have two packages out of the way. No, oh, I'm not even sure how I'm gonna open this without wrecking it. So I just ordered some art supplies. Uh, my mom would have ordered them for me for my birthday, but I wanted specific ones. So it was just easier for me to order them myself. Look at that gorgeous packaging. Here's some plastic. Okay. So these are a lot of pencils because I've been really getting into using pencils on top of my watercolor and this is actually an eraser one side is for pen if I'm correct and the other side is for erasing pencils and I have one Holbein bottle pencil and the rest is polychromos by Faber Castell you can see I have mostly the same colors so this is all around in the same range I have some darker colors so I have a paints gray and dark indigo and otherwise just a lot of forest colors with a reddish tone here they say a dark red and yes I have a, like a pastel it's called beige red, like a pastel pinkish. Um, and then two more, and these are called the Delft's Blue and the Mauve. I have a Delft's Blue paint by Schminke, and it's just the most gorgeous paint. So I just wanted to have this as well. And also I am from Delft, so I just thought it would be fun. Just be really careful with those. I will swatch them all out later. Um, when it's good daylight in here so you can see the real colors on camera because now I think it will not give a good color even though I try to get it with this lighting then we have this little package that's packaged with love oh so much okay so it's a little bit dented I have one acrylic gouache and this is an ash rose, which I thought was so pretty and it would be so fun to use with these colors. It's kind of in the same palette. Then we have normal gouaches here, all by Holbein. And I just took some colors that I just really wanted for a long time because I think they're so pretty. Um, I had landscapes in my mind when I bought them. 
but also a painting a lot of animals and they have all muted colors as well so i have an ash green and an ash blue it should be really pretty and a moss green which is kind of more olive sap green i feel like but we will swatch that out and this one this was the most expensive one it was not a color i would ever go for but somehow it just intrigued me and i really wanted to have it i also thought it would be great with these colors um and it's an orange color it doesn't look really orange it's more rusty uh, but we will swatch that out as well just to see how it will look like so through the power of editing here's the swatching Welcome to the swatching. I have the pencils, the paint, some water, a mixing tray. It would be great to have. Yes, and a brush. Um, and I thought we were just gonna swatch them out. Let's organize this a little bit by color. Maybe like this. And start out. I never actually owned these Polychromos pencils. I do have some Derwin pencils, but I just bought a little thin of that and that's all I have. So this is really nice. Let me see. This is olive green or olive green yellowish. Just write it down. And we'll see for fiber castle. Okay, and now let's swatch out the rest for the pencils. And I will speed it up a little bit because otherwise it won't be any fun to watch. Oh, one more important thing. There are the stickers. But they remove super smooth without any sticky stuff. It's always important to know. Okay, and now let's speed it up.
noticed is that the whole bite is way smoother, way more waxy than the others on the polychromos. I also love the colors. I know it's a little bit of a weird color palette that I picked out, but like I said, I already have some pencils um, and those are all warm colors. I recently visited Iceland and I just wanted some colors to paint that. So I needed to have the greens um, the dark indigo, the greys, and the yellow. And I really like, let me see if I can show you like this a little bit more close. The pine green, delves blue, the dark indigo are really pretty. I love the earth green as well, mostly because that's what's on my walls downstairs. And the lilac is beautiful as well. You can even see that it's a little bit more waxy. And the last pencil that I haven't tested out yet is an eraser. So what I want to do is try and get a nice gradient between two colors, see if that works out, and then test the eraser while we're at it. I'm sorry for all the shaking that's going on while I'm coloring. Um, my phone camera is connected to my desk. So when I'm coloring, it all shakes. I'm just gonna take the dark red and mauve for a moment and see if I can layer that. I will try and not push too hard. I'm not a color pencil artist. I am very new at this, so I'm not even sure if this is the correct method for layering. Just I'm going over the red somewhat here and then back. My starting point a little bit darker. Then go back in with the dark red. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right. For me, it's just purple. You clearly see that I'm not a professional at this. Okay, I think that layers, well, layers nicely. And I also wanted to test it out with the whole bang. We only have one whole bang. So I'm testing it out with lilac and earth green. Not that those colors go together, but I think they're both beautiful, so I will just test them out. I'm not sure if it will transition nicely because the one is a little bit more waxy than the other. I assume two of these will layer up nicely. It's way thicker than the other. I think that's turning out pretty nice. is a slightly textured paper it's the arches not the hot press not the cold press but the one in between with the light green foreground on the block uh, let me show you it's this one i bought this thinking it was 300 gsm and it was not so i cannot use it for watercolors um so i use it mostly to swatch everything out before i start because this paper is still very similar um, and I'm using it for some different medias. Luckily, I bought only the small block. So. Okay, and now for eraser, we have the waxy part and normal part. 
this is not the eraser. Yeah. One side should be for colored pencils and the other one should be for pen. So I'm not sure which is which. We're just gonna try it either way. Okay, well it didn't really work. And I smudged out the pencil. Let's try the other side. Okay, so this doesn't really work either. Maybe if you have just this little bit of... Setting it up very lightly. It will work if you just get off the, the little very thin layer, but not for anything thicker. Oh, I'm guessing the pink side is for pencil and the other side is for pen, but it will tear your paper up before it removes anything. I'll just let get this off without getting smudge everywhere. And now all we have left to test is the paint. Get this out of the way. So I'm first going to try the acrylic course because it's a little bit different from the rest. The difference between acrylic course and normal course. I, own, I bought an art set of these. So I have used it once, but like I, I'm not an expert in this. But this behaves like gouache as well as acrylics. So it dries like gouache with the matte finish, but um, it won't reactivate. So as some of the specialties of acrylics and some of them for gouache. And I'm just getting it a little bit wet just to not have a very, very thick consistency. And so it was on just a little bit easier. A very nice color. Once I'm done stretching everything, I will just take a better photo because even though it's daylight now, it's it's a rainy day. All days are rainy here in the Netherlands. So I'm using these cotton rags, they're baby rags really, uh, but I don't have a baby. I do have paint and they clean up super nicely every time. So I just use them to wipe my brushes off. So it gives a really nice color. Here's the more opaque one and here's the more diluted one. And that is Ash Rose by Holbein. Okay, the rest is normal gouache. I'm somewhat more familiar with normal gouache. Um, I normally use watercolors and when I started using gouache, I actually used it as watercolors. So I just put them all on a palette and let them dry and then reactivate it whenever I use them. And for me and for some other artists as well, it was a really great way to start with them because you're not wasting any paint um, and the thicker consistency is just a little bit harder to work with for me but I guess if you're coming from acrylics acrylics and trying out gouache um, then it would be the other way around so you would use it very thickly at the beginning okay. we have an ash blue here Just getting my brush wet and then take it on my brush so I have a thick consistency. It's a really pretty color. 
color. I hope the weather clears up so I can take a good picture for you so you can see it. So this normal gouache you can reactivate it once it's dry so if it's dry and I just go over it with a wet brush again it will reactivate just like watercolors although somewhat easier than watercolors I once painted a page in my sketchbook my first ever thing with gouache and I laid it on um, quite thickly because I didn't know how to use it and then the other side of the page I used watercolors so the page got drenched with water and it all reactivated again and that caused the gouache to stick to all the pages before that. I don't know if my finger is too much, but just the swatch. This is a very nice color. Have it the same as this earth green. It will dry lighter. So I assume it will be somewhat the same. Oh, that gets dirty fast. So just to come back on what I said before about the sketchbook, like do not hesitate to use gouache in your sketchbook. It's crazy, crazy good for sketchbooks um, and it looks really well in them just because of the matte finish and you can layer them. You, you can do so much with them. Um, so please do use it, but just do not soak the other side of the page um, of your sketchbook with water, then you will be fine. So this is a moss green and again I was thinking of Iceland when I bought these. I would say it's just like an olive green but I'm not sure how it dries. I'm also not sure what the difference should be between olive and moss. Dries really quick, like you see me laying up the thick water here. It doesn't reactivate that easily, or at least it stays where it is when reactivated. That's something. Cool, and the last one is this orange color, which I just thought. It would look great. Uh, I do not have such a color and it's not really fitting with the rest of the colors that I bought this time. That I got, I would say. This goes really nicely with this ash blue.
now I just write the names. So, ta-da! And now just let me see if I can give you a good look at them close to the window. Don't pay attention to the mess on the floor. So you see the gouache is already drying, the acrylic gouache is dry, the beautiful colors from the pencils, the gradients, okay, so I thought, so I think these look pretty nice. So then that was all for now, just the unboxing and the swatching. I hope you guys liked it. I will pop in a picture of the of the swatches as well, just for you to look at. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and for listening to me rambling on about paints and colored pencils. Um, every like, subscribe thing, it really helps. I know it looks weird. I know it. it feels weird to even say it um, but it does really help getting me to a place where I want to be so thank you so much every minute watched helped so thank you and see you next time